Coach Payne, uh, believe it or not, originally it was called, it was Coach D. Payne, or just D. Payne. A great uh, client, a friend of mine out in Illinois, her name was Donna, by the name of Donna Claxton. The whole Payne thing came from there, based on how I actually coach people from a physical perspective. And uh, obviously I have a very unique way of coaching people, and obviously I pushed them a little bit further than what normal fitness may be for some. Um, that's originally where the name came from, and then I just kind of elevated it a little bit and came up with the Coach Payne theory. What do you like best about Coach Payne? I love his passion for what he's teaching, um, what he's giving to everybody. I feel like um, I, I just I'm drawn to him. I think people are just drawn to him because he's so powerful in his speech. Let them know I walked in that mile with you before. I've been there. It's my time. In his actions. Um, he's he's fun, he's funny. What about some uh, motivational tips, advice for people who want to learn how to moderate eating cookies? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> oh man, I love, man, come on, cookies. He just, he's just well-rounded. Um, he's very motivating, inspiring. Um, he builds you up by tearing you down. <laughs> so, um, he's just a dynamic person. Can you tell me like how Coach Payne uh, has made an impact in your life? Can I do this without crying? <laughs> when I started training with Coach um, a year ago, it was pretty kind of a low point, you know, um, depressed and had no confidence whatsoever. And um, I was training hard and doing obstacle course races, and I was placing first and second in most of the like Spartan open heats, and decided I wanted to take it to another level, but I couldn't get past that. Um, not feeling like I was good enough, and um, coaches, you know, he doesn't just coach you physically, you know, he coaches me through a lot of emotional pain and, and brought me to a level where I feel, I feel strong, not just physically, but I just, I feel so much more confident and stronger. It's going to get tough sometimes. That's life, right? Life gets tough. When it gets tough, you get tougher. <laughs> <laughs> He's an amazing coach. Thank you. Uh, what's cool about this place, um, it's kind of, it's got a little bit of everything. You know, you got the mountains, you got you know, obviously some wildlife, which I'm not too keen on, because I'm not, everybody knows I'm not a bug person. It's a beautiful place, man. I call it, it's like God's country. Man. You know, you don't have to be in a gym, you know? You don't have to do that. It's just a beautiful place. Um, it has its benefits. And you can just literally discover not just the environment that you're in, but yourself. I think the biggest mistake that people make is that they always feel like they got to depend on equipment. Not that I'm saying that you should neglect those things because those things obviously serve their purpose. But you are the ultimate weapon. Your body. Your mind, your body, your spirit. And if you can take those three things and combine them, you can go anywhere and be active. Coach like Payne, to say become comfortable being uncomfortable, that's Coach Payne. And I want to keep competing in OCR and just stay in shape in general, you know, so I can be the cool grandfather that chases the kids around and uh, just engage life actively, you know. Everybody falls. That's a part of life. If you're going through life and you're thinking everything is supposed to be easy for you, you're living in the wrong world. You are here to go through things. You are here to fail some things. Here's what happens to most people. They're so used to being at a certain level and the moment they fall, they want to quit. They don't have nothing to prove. They, oh, they don't, they don't, they don't want to show the world that they're getting their butts kicked. There are a lot of people in this world that are like that. So many people are afraid to show the world that, hey, I am human. Hey, I can fall. Hey, I can fail. So the best advice that I give anybody, as long as you are living in this world, it is your responsibility to not give up. My dad always told me, you know, you work out, you tend to look better and you feel better about yourself. And he's right, and that's why I continue to work out, because it feels great. His motivation is top notch. Like, 
He's he's hard but humble, strong, and also you could tell there's a there's a family fitness to him. His son comes here, his daughters worked out with us. We met his wife. It's like his his whole world is fitness and they know it and they love it. Do I want success? Absolutely. Who doesn't want success? But success has no limitations. There's no limitations to success. You have got to keep moving forward. You have got to keep going harder and stronger. You fall, get up, move forward, claw, climb, cry, yell, whatever you got to do. It's a very difficult task, I know, but it, it has to be. For me, it's tough. Maybe I have accomplished a few things, but have I accomplished enough? Have I really gotten where I want to be? Absolutely not. And that's the struggle. But that's the struggle that helps me to be a better man, a better human being, a better person. It helps me to help others, to show them the way. I mean, he just pushes us. I'm working out with A-plus athletes. He knows how to drive you, and he teaches you how to embrace the pain, how to how to take it in and, uh, and use it in your favor. This is my domain. This is what I do. This is who I am. Coach Payne, he pushes you, but he's also very understanding of your fitness level. Training with Coach has taken me to a level that I never, ever thought of, that I would achieve. And to be running alongside some just amazing athletes and com actually being competitive with them was, it was such an amazing feeling. I think everybody should have an opportunity to work with Coach. Everybody's not going to be an Olympian. Everybody's not going to be a bodybuilder. Everybody's not going to be a triathlon athlete. Everybody's not going to be an OCR champion. But I think when you're at the point where people see you and see your gift and your talent and your success or whatever it is that you're calling it, then it's your duty to shine even brighter outside of the sport that you enjoy. A mother raising five kids, six kids, that's a champion. That's a warrior. Or a father out there going, beating himself to death to take care of his, you know, supporting his family. The people that may not be as good at running OCR races or doing these events, man, they're the strongest people in the world right now. You'd be amazed. That slowest person that you see on the course is probably the most powerful person you ever meet off the course. Innovative, that's the best way to put it. He will surprise you in every aspect, trains you in ways that your body is not, not ready for. Again, I feel honored to be in his presence. I was klutz when I first started working my coat. I couldn't have done any of the stuff we did earlier. I <laughs> have fallen on my face. So he's helped me in so much. Like he, he doesn't just train the body, you know, but your mind. There ain't nothing but in that house but love. Just me, and my mom, my sister, and my dad. We sit together as one. So it's pretty cool. Most people that know, um, I'm about to say it was just losing my mother, man. That was one of the toughest obstacles that I had to overcome. Um, because it was so sudden when my mom left this world. Um, it was almost like yesterday, you know, I was at the point of my uh, point in my life where I was competing in an Ironman physique competition. That very next day, I wanted to call my mom. And as I got ready to pick up the phone, my younger sister was calling me. It was like crazy. She's calling me and saying, hey, mom, is in, uh, my mom was uh, unresponsive. Unconscious. Um, obviously, she had suffered from a stroke at the time. Obviously, that's what it was overall. So my dad obviously found on the side of the bed. You know, we rushed to the paramedics. My dad was in the hospital at my mom's bedside, and I saw my father crying. It's not the first time I saw my dad cry, but that was probably one of the most unique experiences that I've ever seen. And when I saw that and witnessed him with tears in his eyes, I knew it wasn't good. But when I went and talked with the doctor, I pulled her to the side and she said to me, um, after I asked her, hey, is my, is my mom gonna be okay? But, you know, that kind of stuff. And she immediately came back and said uh, she had too much blood on her brain and there's nothing we can do for her. I thought I was dreaming. You know, I thought I was dreaming. I thought I was like, nah, this can't be real. Not my mother, my mother's a strong woman. When it started to sink in that she was no longer going to be around for very long, I just literally just 
lost it. I mean, they had to ret re restrain me, remove me from the hospital. Obviously, like any person would do, I act out and I literally ripped, the, you know, tore the hospital room apart because I just couldn't bear the thought of losing my mom. And my wife was with me at the time. Uh, my youngest brother was with me at the time. We were all together, but I guess me being the oldest son, I don't know, everybody deals with things different than others. So a week I went by, they kept on life support for about, about four or five days. And finally they said that she was clinically brain dead. When that final point happened, the last thing I could do was go in the room put my arms around my mom, tell my mom how much I loved her, how much I appreciate her, and everything she taught me and my younger brother and sister. Everybody deals with losses differently than others, but when you lose someone that gave you life, it's a, it's a hard thing to, to deal with. The pain that I endured from that, still I live with it to this day. But as the years go on, because it'd be five years since she passed, as the years go on, I learned to get a little better with it. But that time when I put my arms around my mom, I remember the words she said to me. She said, son, whatever you do in this world, be the best at it. Whatever you do in this world, don't always make it about yourself. Make a difference in the world. I made a promise to my mom, and I said, mom, I won't let you down. I'm going to do everything that I can to make a difference in this world and do it in your honor. And uh, that was probably the hardest obstacle, man, that I had to overcome and I had to grow from it. And sometimes pain, you have to endure it so you can understand the rewards of the victories that come behind that. Now, I know my mother's at peace now, and every time I step out there and do the job that I was required to do, I always give a time and a moment to reflect on her and I always do that and look up to the sky and say, Mom, this is for you. And um, that's what gets me through everyday life, man.